In the extensive history of royalty, there exists a fascinating chapter that revolves around monarchs who chose to step down from their thrones voluntarily. Abdication, the act of relinquishing royal power, is a decision that echoes through time, revealing stories of duty, personal struggles, and sometimes controversy. What happens to monarchs when they abdicate? Do they fade into obscurity, or do their life take unexpected turns? Join us on a journey to explore the tales of 15 monarchs who, for various reasons, chose to step away from the majesty of their rule. Number 15. King Edward, the Eight of the United Kingdom. In 1936, something remarkable and quite controversial occurred in the United Kingdom's monarchy. King Edward VIII made an extraordinary decision that sent shockwaves through the entire royal institution. He chose to step down from the throne. This event was not just a political move. It was a deeply personal choice intertwined with a love story that went against traditional royal norms and even triggered a constitutional crisis. King Edward, celebrated for his charm and unique personality, had only recently become the monarch on January 1936, after the passing of his father, King George V. However, his reign was anything but stable, largely due to his affection for Wallace Simpson, an American socialite with two previous divorces, a match considered unsuitable by the standards of that time. The challenge lay in the Church of England's strong opposition to the idea of Edward marrying a divorcee, aligning with its stance against remarriage after divorce when the former spouse was still alive. Edward found himself at a crucial juncture, either fulfill his duties as the monarch or follow his heart's desire. On December 1936, after merely 11 months on the throne, he made the unprecedented decision to abdicate. In a sincere radio broadcast addressed to the nation, he explained his choice stating that he couldn't fulfill his duties without the support of the woman I love. The abdication speech was emotionally charged, underlining his dedication to the well-being of the people while recognizing the impossibility of leading without the woman he intended to marry. Edward's abdication, which led to his brother becoming King George VI, had far-reaching consequences. It sparked debates on the monarchy's role, the impact of personal choices on royal duty, and the necessity for institutional modernization. After stepping down, Edward took on the title of Duke of Windsor, marrying Wallace Simpson, and residing mostly in exile from the UK. Number 14. Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands, a stalwart figure in European royalty, orchestrated a seamless transition of power, embodying grace and dedication throughout her reign. On April 2013, she made an unprecedented decision that resonated across the kingdom. She abdicated the throne in favor of her eldest son, Willem Alexander. Beatrix ascended to the throne in 1980 after the abdication of her mother, Queen Juliana. Her reign was marked by an unwavering commitment to her duties, earning her immense respect and admiration. Yet, as time progressed, Beatrix earnestly contemplated the weight of her responsibilities and the evolving needs of the monarchy. With the passing years, Queen Beatrix approached a pivotal juncture. At 75, having steered the nation through significant social and economic transformations, she recognized the potential of a fresh perspective. Her decision to step down didn't stem from weariness, but from a profound desire to ensure continuity within the monarchy. The Netherlands, renowned for its stability, was captivated by Beatrix's choice. The announcement was a testament to her selflessness, prioritizing the welfare of the kingdom over personal legacy. Her abdication signaled a harmonious passing of the torch, affirming the stability and unity of the Dutch monarchy. The abdication ceremony, held in Amsterdam's royal palace, was a poignant and dignified affair. It symbolized a historic moment of transition, as Beatrix officially proclaimed her son as the new king of the Netherlands. Willem Alexander, with his wife, Queen Maxima, by his side, accepted the responsibility with humility and determination. Beatrix's legacy endures not only through her remarkable tenure, but also through her foresight in preparing the monarchy for the future. Her decision to abdicate showcased her deep sense of duty 
and unwavering commitment to the well-being of the Dutch people. Her reign exemplified strength, wisdom, and a profound dedication to service, leaving an indelible mark on the history and hearts of the Netherlands. Number 13. King Juan Carlos The First of Spain, King Juan Carlos The First, an important figure in Spain's history, took a huge step in 2014 by choosing to step down from the throne. Born in 1938, Juan Carlos became the King of Spain in 1975, after General Francisco Franco passed away. His time ruling the country was a vital part of Spain's journey from being ruled by a dictator to becoming a democracy. The decision to abdicate came as a surprise to the Spanish public and the international community alike. Juan Carlos, having played a key role in the establishment of democracy in Spain, was faced with declining popularity amid scandals and controversies. His abdication was viewed as a strategic move to ensure the stability of the Spanish monarchy and pave the way for a new generation. One of the defining factors leading to his abdication was a series of personal controversies, including a lavish elephant hunting trip to Botswana during a period of economic hardship in Spain. The incident generated public outcry and damaged the king's previously unblemished image. In light of these challenges, Juan Carlos chose to step down, making way for his son, Felipe VI. The abdication ceremony occurred on June 18, 2014, as Juan Carlos signed the official act in the presence of the Spanish Prime Minister and dignitaries. In a televised address, he explained his decision, showing faith in the younger generation's ability to guide Spain forward. Felipe VI smoothly transitioned into power, officially becoming king on June 19, 2014. Juan Carlos's abdication signaled the end of an era for the Spanish monarchy while embodying a commitment to adaptability and a more modern, accountable monarchy. The move sparked varied reactions among the Spanish people, reflecting the complex views on the monarchy's role in contemporary society. Subsequently, Juan Carlos faced financial controversies and investigations, prompting his self-imposed exile from Spain. Despite this, his abdication remains a significant moment in Spanish history, illustrating the monarchy's challenges and evolution in a swiftly changing world. Number 12. Empress Maria Theresa of Austria Empress Maria Theresa of Austria, a powerful figure in European history, encountered a crucial turning point in 1740 when her father passed away. Suddenly she found herself becoming the ruler of the Habsburg dominions, shouldering the heavy responsibility of governing during a tumultuous period. Yet, amidst these challenges, a decision she made left an enduring mark on the history of royalty, further cementing her legacy. At the tender age of 23, Maria Theresa assumed the mantle of power. Her ascendancy was not without contention. Challenges emerged from neighboring powers seeking to capitalize on what they viewed as a vulnerable regime. Amidst this turbulence, Maria Theresa navigated with a blend of fortitude and political acumen, firmly asserting her authority. In 1745, a distinctive moment in history emerged as Maria Theresa, in an uncommon move, opted to relinquish the title of Holy Roman Empress in favor of her husband, Francis I. This gesture, while seemingly unconventional for the era, was a strategic maneuver born of astute political calculation. Maria Theresa recognized the significance of unity and sought to solidify the Habsburg dynasty by legitimizing her husband's role. The act was symbolic, affirming Francis III's status as a co-ruler, a testament to their partnership in governance. This strategic gesture not only reinforced marital bonds, but also aimed to foster stability within the empire. Her decision to abdicate the esteemed title of Holy Roman Empress did not diminish her influence. Instead, it underlined her commitment to fortifying familial and dynastic ties while navigating the intricate webs of power politics. Maria Theresa continued to reign as Archduchess of Austria and Queen of Hungary and Bohemia, leaving an indelible mark on history for her resilience and far-sighted statesmanship. The legacy of Empress Maria Theresa reverberates through the corridors of power, not merely as a sovereign but as a visionary leader who adeptly balanced the complexities of governance and personal ties. Number 11. 
Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands. Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands, a resolute leader with an unwavering commitment to her nation, made the crucial decision to step down from the throne in 1948. Her reign, spanning a tumultuous period that included the harrowing years of World War II, earned her a place in history as a monarch of exceptional fortitude. Ascending to the throne at the tender age of 10 in 1890, Queen Wilhelmina faced the daunting challenges of guiding her nation through the ravages of war. During World War II, the Netherlands found itself caught in the crossfire of conflict, and Queen Wilhelmina's steadfast presence became a symbol of hope for her people. Her radio broadcasts to the Dutch citizens from her exile in London served as a beacon of resilience during the occupation, earning her widespread admiration. However, the toll of the war and the subsequent reconstruction efforts took a toll on the Queen's health. Struggling with physical exhaustion and the strain of leadership, Queen Wilhelmina selflessly recognized the need for a leader with renewed vigor to guide the nation into the post-war era. Her decision to abdicate was grounded in a profound sense of duty, putting the well-being of her country above personal aspirations. In 1948, Queen Wilhelmina gracefully abdicated, paving the way for her daughter, Princess Juliana, to ascend the throne. This shift wasn't just symbolic, it symbolized the passage of leadership from a monarch who navigated challenges to a new generation set to rebuild and redefine the nation. Wilhelmina's legacy transcends her abdication. Her reign prioritized her people's welfare, and her decision to step down showed rare self-awareness and dedication to the greater good. Even in leaving the throne, she remained a symbol of stability, ensuring a smooth transition that upheld the monarchy's dignity. Number 10. Emperor Akihito of Japan Emperor Akihito of Japan's abdication in 2019 marked a historic moment not only for Japan, but also for the world. Born on December 23, 1933, Emperor Akihito ascended to the Chrysanthemum throne in 1989 following the death of his father, Emperor Hirohito. His reign, known as the Heisei era, spanned three decades characterized by cultural evolution, modernization, and profound societal changes. However, amid the deep reverence and respect accorded to the imperial institution in Japan, Emperor Akihito faced a delicate dilemma. His health had become a matter of concern, as he underwent heart surgery and battled cancer, reflecting the challenges of carrying out the demanding responsibilities of his role. Despite the steadfast tradition of emperors serving until death, Emperor Akihito exhibited exceptional humility and compassion by expressing his desire to step down, recognizing the necessity for a vigorous monarch to effectively fulfill the duties expected of the position. This intention to abdicate wasn't just a personal choice, it symbolized a progressive shift in the perception of the emperor's role, emphasizing the human aspect of the monarch beyond divine symbolism. The emperor's wish to abdicate led to unprecedented legislative action in Japan. The Japanese government, acknowledging the extraordinary circumstance, enacted a special law allowing for his abdication, the first such instance in over two centuries. Emperor Akihito's decision to step down was a reflection of his dedication to the welfare of the nation, setting a precedent that emphasized the significance of an emperor's physical and mental well-being. His abdication ceremony on April 30, 2019, was a solemn yet celebratory affair, attended by dignitaries, including foreign royalty, and witnessed by millions across Japan. The following day, his elder son, Crown Prince Naruhito, ascended the throne, inaugurating the Rewa era. Number 9. King Albert II of Belgium King Albert II of Belgium's abdication in 2013 marked a decisive moment in Belgian history as he gracefully yielded the throne to his son, Philippe. This regal transition was not merely a passing of the scepter, but a poignant convergence of personal health considerations and a monarch's responsibility to a nation. Albert II, born Albert Felix Humbert Theodore Christian, Eugene Marie in 1934, ascended to the Belgian throne in 1993. Throughout his reign, he navigated the intricate web of constitutional monarchy with poise, 
overseeing a period of stability and progress for the nation. However, as the years unfolded, the toll of time became evident. In 2013, at the age of 79, the king approached a crossroads where duty and health intersected. The monarch, known for his affable demeanor and commitment to his people, faced a decision that resonated beyond the royal corridors. Citing health reasons and recognizing the physical demands of the role, Albert II chose to abdicate, making way for his eldest son, Philippe, Duke of Brabant, to assume the throne. The abdication, marked by solemnity and tradition, was sanctioned by the Belgian Parliament through a special law. This historic event, the first in the Belgian monarchy since 1951, bore personal weight alongside immense historical significance. Transitioning from King Albert II to Philippe represented a generational shift, carrying distinct challenges and opportunities. In his farewell speech, King Albert II expressed gratitude for the Belgian people's support and faith in the new monarch's abilities. This symbolic passing of the torch highlighted the monarchy's resilience and its capacity to adapt within a modern constitutional state. King Philippe, now the seventh king, assumed leadership amidst a nation in transition. His reign prioritized unity and inclusivity while building upon his predecessor's foundations. Number 8. King Leopold, the Third of Belgium. King Leopold. The Third of Belgium's abdication in 1951 was an unprecedented and defining moment in Belgian history. Born in 1901, Leopold's reign faced tumultuous challenges during World War II. His controversial choices, notably his surrender to the invading German forces in 1940, sparked intense national debate and ultimately led to his abdication. Belgium's occupation during the war saw a division among its citizens regarding Leopold's actions. While some perceived his surrender as a strategy to protect the Belgian people from greater harm, others vehemently opposed it, viewing it as a betrayal of national interests. The controversial decision to remain in Belgium during the occupation further polarized public opinion. The post-war period marked a critical juncture for Leopold's reign. Despite his return to Belgium in 1945, the wounds of the war remained fresh, exacerbating existing tensions. The king's attempt to resume his royal duties faced immense resistance. Protests erupted across the country, demanding his abdication and questioning his ability to unify a nation scarred by wartime complexities. Facing escalating pressure, Leopold III made the historic decision to abdicate the throne in favor of his son, Baudouin, on July 16, 1951. His abdication speech resonated with a blend of humility and acknowledgement of the nation's fractured sentiments. He expressed his desire for national reconciliation, acknowledging the polarized opinions surrounding his reign. Leopold's abdication wasn't just about giving up power, it was a powerful step toward healing a nation. It signified a monarch's choice to prioritize unity over personal desires, a pivotal moment in Belgian history. After stepping down, Leopold III retreated from public life, seeking a quiet existence outside politics. In Belgium, his legacy sparked debates, highlighting the complexities of leadership during crises and how historical decisions shape a nation's collective memory. Number 7. Queen Christina of Sweden Queen Christina of Sweden's abdication in 1965 was a monumental shift in the history of monarchies. Born in 1626, Christina ascended to the throne at the tender age of six upon her father's death. Her reign was marked by a passion for arts, culture, and a fierce intellect that defied the societal norms of her time. However, Christina's unorthodox ways became more evident as she matured. Her choice of attire, often masculine in style, and her preference for scholarly pursuits over traditional courtly duties stirred whispers among the nobility. Yet it was her decision to abdicate that stunned Europe. Christina's abdication was not merely an act of relinquishing power. It was a deliberate and calculated move to pursue personal freedom and spiritual exploration. Faced with the constraints of her position and her unorthodox beliefs, she decided to renounce the throne in favor of her cousin, Charles X. Her motivation for stepping down was multifaceted. 
Notably, Christina sought to embrace her true identity and intellectual passions, unhindered by the constraints of royalty. Renouncing the Lutheran faith of her nation, she converted to Catholicism, a move that significantly impacted her decision to abdicate. Choosing a life beyond the confines of royalty, Christina set out on a journey to Rome, where she sought intellectual stimulation, patronizing the arts, and engaging in philosophical discourse. Her patronage attracted renowned artists and thinkers, shaping Rome's cultural landscape during the Baroque era. Christina's abdication extended beyond theological pursuits, shaping Sweden's political trajectory. Her cousin Charles ascended the throne during tumultuous periods marked by wars and political unrest. Number 6. Emperor Nicholas II of Russia Emperor Nicholas II of Russia's abdication in 1917 marked a seismic shift in global history, ushering in the end of the Romanov dynasty and the dawn of a new era in Russia. Born into privilege as the heir to the imperial throne, Nicholas II faced mounting challenges during his reign, exacerbated by the strain of World War I and the growing discontent among his people. The political landscape was tumultuous, with Russia embroiled in conflict and facing severe economic hardships. Amidst this turmoil, revolutionary fervor swept across the country, fueled by widespread dissatisfaction with the monarchy's autocratic rule. The February Revolution erupted in 1917, sparking mass protests and strikes, with citizens demanding political reforms, an end to food shortages, and an escape from the ravages of war. Nicholas II, recognizing the gravity of the situation and pressured by his advisors, reluctantly chose to abdicate the throne. In a poignant act of selflessness, he renounced his title and power, hoping it would bring stability and peace to his country. The emperor's decision wasn't solely a result of personal choice, but a response to the fervent calls for change resonating throughout Russia. The abdication of Nicholas II fundamentally altered the course of Russian history. It marked the end of centuries of autocratic rule by the Romanovs and paved the way for the establishment of a provisional government. However, the subsequent power vacuum and continued upheaval led to further chaos, eventually culminating in the October Revolution and the rise of the Bolsheviks under Vladimir Lenin. Nicholas II's abdication wasn't merely a royal departure, it was a symbolic concession to the will of the people and a catalyst for the profound political transformation that followed. Tragically, it also foreshadowed his family's fate, as they faced a tragic end at the hands of the Bolsheviks, a somber epilogue to a dynasty that had ruled Russia for over three centuries. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. What happens to monarchs? When they abdicate, you see, when monarchs abdicate, they voluntarily step down from the throne, often due to age, health, or personal reasons. Their fate post-abdication varies widely based on historical context and personal choices. Some retreat to seclusion, pursuing quiet lives away from the public eye to enjoy hobbies or spend time with family. Others remain influential figures, providing counsel to successors or engaging in philanthropy and public service. Abdicated monarchs might retain certain privileges, like titles or residences, continuing to represent their country on ceremonial occasions. For example, King Juan Carlos of Spain abdicated in 2014, maintaining a role in public affairs but without official responsibilities. Ultimately, the post-abdication life of a monarch is a complex mix of personal preference, societal expectations, and the unique circumstances surrounding their reign and departure. Let us know what you think about this. Number 5. King Carol II of Romania In 1940, the abdication of King Carol II of Romania became a turbulent turning point in the country's history, shaped by complicated politics and outside forces. When he took the throne in 1930, Carol II encountered ongoing difficulties throughout his rule. His firm and controlling leadership conflicted with the widespread wish for more democratic changes, leading to widespread dissatisfaction among the people. Romania found itself on the brink of World War II, torn between maintaining neutrality and succumbing to territorial demands from neighboring powers. Carol II, amidst these pressing issues, abdicated in favor of his young son Michael I, 
on September 6, 1940. His decision, though seemingly abrupt, stemmed from multifaceted circumstances. Political unrest had escalated. Carol II faced mounting criticism for his autocratic governance, dissolving multiple governments and disregarding constitutional norms. Simultaneously, fascist and Nazi influences permeated Europe, pressuring Romania to yield territories to Hungary and Bulgaria. Facing external pressures, Carol II sought support from Marshal Ion Antonescu, a fervent nationalist, to regain control. However, this alliance backfired, fueling public backlash and endangering the monarchy. Antonescu's ascent coincided with rising dissent among Romanians, pushing Carol to a critical decision, abdication to stabilize Romania. Yet, this move failed, setting off a chain of events that aligned Romania with Nazi Germany and intensified internal turmoil. At only 19, Michael inherited the throne amid profound political instability. Number 4. King Constantine, the Second of Greece Amidst the turbulent story of Greek history, the abdication of King Constantine II emerges as a touching and impactful chapter, filled with political turmoil and a decisive change in the fate of the nation. Born into the Glücksburg dynasty in 1940, Constantine became the Greek king in 1964. But his time ruling was clouded by political conflicts that reached a breaking point, resulting in a dramatic series of events leading to his abdication in 1967. The seeds of Constantine's abdication were sown in the political landscape of Greece. A military coup, orchestrated by a group of army officers, seized control of the government on April 1967, plunging the nation into a period of authoritarian rule. The royal family, perceived by the junta as a symbol of the old order, found themselves at odds with the new regime. Constantine, with a keen sense of the political currents, attempted a delicate balancing act. To maintain a semblance of stability, he initially acquiesced to the military junta. However, as the political climate deteriorated, his relationship with the ruling authorities soured. The king found himself caught in the crossfire of political unrest, torn between loyalty to the democratic principles of the Hellenic constitution and the exigencies of real politic. On December 1967, a failed counter-coup led by supporters of constitutional rule left Constantine in an untenable position, prompting his agonizing decision to abdicate the throne. By June 1973, the Greek monarchy was officially abolished through a referendum, severing the nation's ancient ties with its royal institution. Exiled to London, King Constantine II adapted to a new life, engaging in philanthropy and maintaining connections with the Greek diaspora. Despite the challenges, he embraced this unexpected turn, becoming a living symbol of a past Greece, predating the seismic shifts of the late 20th century. Number 3. Emperor Ferdinand I of Austria Emperor Ferdinand I of Austria, stepping down from power in 1848, stood as a critical point amid Europe's revolutionary passion. With protests widespread and calls for changes to the constitution echoing, Ferdinand, dealing with serious mental health issues, found himself in an impossible position as the leader of the vast Austrian Empire. Born in 1793, Ferdinand ascended to power in 1835, inheriting a vast realm beset by burgeoning nationalist aspirations and social upheaval. His reign was plagued by his affliction with what is now believed to be severe epilepsy and intellectual disabilities, rendering him incapable of effectively governing. The year 1848 emerged as a watershed moment across Europe, a time of tumultuous revolutions and clamors for change. Austria was not immune to this wave of discontent, with various ethnic groups within the empire voicing grievances and pushing for autonomy. Ferdinand's reign was marred by his inability to respond adeptly to these demands, exacerbated by his erratic behavior and limited capacity to comprehend the complexities of governance. As discontent brewed, revolutionaries took to the streets, demanding reforms and greater liberties. Facing the escalating crisis and acknowledging his inability to navigate the turbulent political landscape, Ferdinand reluctantly abdicated the throne on December 2, 1848. 
This move was viewed as a concession to the growing revolution and a step toward stability. His abdication paved the way for his young and politically astute nephew, Franz Joseph, to assume the throne. Franz Joseph's nearly seven-decade reign was marked by grappling with nationalist aspirations, eventually contributing to the dissolution of the empire. Ferdinand I's abdication, driven by mental infirmities and changing political pressures, marked a turning point, ushering in a new era under Franz Joseph, characterized by efforts to manage the burgeoning nationalist movements that would ultimately lead to the empire's dissolution in the early 20th century. Number 2. King Otto of Bavaria In the annals of Bavarian history, the tale of King Otto stands as a remarkable chapter, blending tragedy with the complexities of monarchy and mental health. Born in 1848, Otto ascended to the throne at the tender age of 18, succeeding his father, King Maximilian II. The young monarch exhibited a keen intellect and a deep appreciation for the arts and culture, fostering a promising start to his reign. However, shadows loomed over Otto's rule as concerns about his mental state gradually emerged. Reports surfaced hinting at erratic behavior and instances of instability. These signs, initially dismissed as mere youthful eccentricities, evolved into worrisome patterns as Otto's mental health deteriorated. The monarch's behavior grew increasingly erratic and detached from reality. He became prone to lengthy periods of seclusion, immersed in his world and detached from the affairs of the state. Bavaria's governance fell into the hands of regents as Otto's mental incapacitation deepened. In 1913, mounting concerns about the kingdom's future led to a pivotal moment. A commission declared King Otto mentally unfit to rule, resulting in his effective deposition. While necessary for Bavaria's stability, this decision marked a somber end to Otto's reign and encapsulated the tragic fate of a young monarch grappling with mental illness. Otto's story highlights the intricate balance between royal duty, mental health, and the burdens of monarchy. Despite his struggles, Otto's legacy endures as a symbol of the delicate interplay between power and personal well-being within the royal sphere. Following his deposition, Otto withdrew from public life, spending his remaining years in seclusion, removed from the world of politics and royalty. Despite a brief and mentally challenged reign, Otto's story serves as a poignant reminder of the human complexities inherent in regal responsibilities. Number 1. Queen Isabella, the Second of Spain, Queen Isabella. The Second of Spain faced a tumultuous reign that culminated in a pivotal moment in Spanish history, the Glorious Revolution of 1868. Her abdication was not merely an act of personal volition, but the outcome of a fervent struggle for power, echoing the nation's desire for change. Ascending the throne at the tender age of three in 1833, Isabella II's reign was mired in political strife and controversy. Her ascension sparked a series of disputes over the Spanish succession, with factions vying for power. As she matured, her reign became embroiled in political scandals and conflicts, further eroding public confidence in her leadership. The tipping point came with the Glorious Revolution, a pivotal event fueled by widespread discontentment with Isabella II's rule. This uprising, a convergence of liberal and progressive forces, sought to overthrow her autocratic regime. It was marked by civil unrest and political upheaval, calling for radical changes in Spain's governance. Amid escalating tensions, Isabella II abdicated the throne on June 25, 1870, relinquishing her claims in favor of her son, Alfonso VII. Her decision was influenced by the relentless pressure of the revolutionaries and the growing support for a more democratic form of governance. Isabella's abdication marked the start of the First Spanish Republic, a tumultuous phase marked by political turmoil and a lack of strong leadership. This pivotal moment signaled the end of her troubled reign and the beginning of a new era, reflecting Spain's longing for change. Despite the controversies of her rule, her abdication stands as a cornerstone in Spain's history, symbolizing the nation's fervent call for reform and a move towards a more progressive governance system. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.